Almost 500 years ago, the first white man gazed upon a great river that wound first sleepily and then roaring with terrific power through a hellhole of heat and desolation. From the far south in search of gold had come this white man and his ragged band of soldiers of fortune, little realizing they were looking upon the greatest source of gold the world ever was to know. For hundreds of years after, this great river was to be a power for evil. Year after year, it tore down what man had built up. Time after time, it changed its course, sweeping to destruction, everything in its path. Then came a vision in the desert, the dream of a man to harness the power of the Colorado, to build in towering Black Canyon the greatest engineering feat of mankind, the Boulder Dam. Thousands of men sweat in back-breaking toil. They gave of their lives, their courage, their souls to make this dream a reality. Today, the Colorado's evil has been turned to good and its swirling muddy waters now pour forth a golden stream of power, electrical power. Boulder Dam is 727 feet high, approximately that of a 70-story building. It is 650 feet thick at the base, equal to two city blocks. Lake Mead, formed by the backing up of the Colorado, would furnish the entire world with drinking water for 28 years. And the power from these gigantic generators, there are 15 in all, and each one the size of a two-story house, is distributed over seven western states. Across deserts and mountains, farmlands and communities, go the high tension lines carrying this golden power to farms and factories and to the studios of Hollywood, where it is the very lifeblood, the heartbeat of the motion picture industry. When Boulder Dam power arrives at the Metro Golden Mare studio, it is alternating current and of 16,000 volts. In the studio's own power plants, it must be converted into direct current and reduced to 2,300 volts before it reaches the huge electrical equipment so vital to the production of motion picture entertainment. These huge generators, motors and switchboards are but a part of the four separate power plants at Metro. Now let us follow this power via subterranean tunnels along the intricate system of cables that carries it to the 30 different stages scattered over the 87 acres covered by the studio. In this magic land of the movies, you'll see the sets as the players and the technicians see them. First we visit the Land of Oz, and because The Wizard of Oz is being filmed entirely in Technicolor, actually billions of candle power are being poured onto this set, enough to light a fair size city. The setting is the cornfield. Far below you see the cameraman about to photograph a scene with Judy Garland, who plays Dorothy, the little sweetheart of Oz. Cumberland, Maryland in 1852 is the scene of Stand Up and Fight to star Wallace Beery and handsome young Robert Taylor. Nice, dangerous job, this, getting the close-up of the stagecoach. Here is the type of camera used. In all, seven cameras were shooting on this one scene at the same time. To this, in fact, to all outside locations, power must be furnished by gasoline-driven generators. Here is a veteran in the service. Compare it with the streamlined power plant of today, gasoline-driven and with a Liberty motor built for heavy duty in desert and mountain country. And the famous California sunshine must be improved by booster lights. And as the light is boosted, it must be diffused by these muslin shades. These reflectors also do their share. They capture every possible ray from the sun and concentrate it on the immediate spot where the scene is being filmed. As the work goes on, preparations are made for the scenes to be photographed at night. Scores of lights are carried to the scene, many of them raised high above the ground. Atop a lofty platform, this giant sun arc is ready for duty. And this is the way the scene looked that night to the stand up and fight players. Power plays an important part in making a test of a young actress. The various lights brought into use are a deuce or sun spot. This is a junior and a broad, a baby spot, the matchbox. Now a 5KW. All of them give you this beautiful photography of a very pretty girl, Joanne Sayers. You will meet her with Mickey Rooney in Huckleberry Finn. Mark Twain would have found in Northern California's lazy American river 
a replica of his own beloved Mississippi. This was the location selected for the filming of Huckleberry Finn. And here is your own Mickey Rooney, soon to be seen in the title role of the Mark Twain classic. And to you, Spencer Tracy, and to your glamorous leading woman, exotic Hedy Lamarck, who stars with you in I Take This Woman. On stage 15, we find the ice follies of 1939 on one of the biggest ice rinks ever constructed. Joan Crawford is to star in this production. High up near the roof are the powerful lights. We pause for just a moment more to catch a glimpse of the activity from behind the cameras. Here is the great boom, or traveling crane, on which the cameraman is stationed. Now let us go into a projection room, where Boulder Dam Power lights the high-intensity arc that flashed through the movie film, gives us this preview of other Metro pictures to come. power that makes your motion pictures flows on to the projection room of your theater and thousands of other theaters all over the world. Back of your theater screen, power brings you the magic of sound, voice, of song and music. On to the electric lights, millions of them. In the signs on every theater, power, electrical power, is the heartbeat, the lifeblood of the magic world of motion picture entertainment.